Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to be making the workbook for the Crafty Companion printable templates that I have designed for like a workstation. It can be a storage unit, it could be um, different little elements like garbage bowls and ink pad holders and organizers and all of that jazz. It can it could be a lot of different things. But today we're going to make the workbook for it and I highly suggest you make the workbook for it. You don't have to make it the way I make it. You could use a, just a regular binder and sheet protectors and print it out, print all the pages off, put them in the sheet protectors and then use your um, print off the um, and then print off the templates onto cardstock, cut them out. Those are the traceable templates. You're going to be needing a lot of traceable templates. There is um, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of templates in here. And the reason for that is because there's different sizes, different sizes of crafty trays. There are different mats for everything. There are different type. There's different, there's so many different components in this printable template that you're going to need some type of workbook. My favorite way is to laminate. Now, last time I made a workbook, it was this glassine bag printable mini album template that we just got finished working with. And I'm gonna make it the same way, except I had put a clear like um, transparency in between the laminating sheet and the cardstock. And I didn't really care for it. I don't like not being able to see what's underneath the, my top you know, I don't like it hiding it there. I mean, you can't really see it anyway because there's that template over top. So I'm not gonna do that with this one, um, but I am gonna laminate it. So everything's gonna be the same as this one, just um, slightly different. Okay, so there is a specific YouTube playlist just for this set of templates. Um, I will have it linked here and I will have it linked down in the description box below. Um, it is called the Crafty Companion and, and like so for example when we go to make the storage unit there'll be a specific YouTube playlist just with that one in it. The, the main YouTube playlist will have all of the videos in it. So the first video will be the intro video to these uh, templates and then the second video will be this video which is the workbook and then so on and so forth. So if we're making the garbage bowl for example then that's what it'll say a crafty um, garbage bowl <laughs> will be the playlist but it'll start with the templates intro and then it'll go to the workbook and then it'll start with the garbage bowl if that makes any sense. And there's also a very specific Amazon playlist that'll say Crafty Companion that will ha I'll have linked in there everything that we use or everything that I can find anyway or the equivalent of will be linked in that Amazon list and that'll be linked down below in the description box. Okay, so I've already done some prep work because it is a lot of work and I didn't want the video to be three hours long. So there's a lot of pages in this template and this is the first video I'm recording for this set of templates because I wanted to do the workbook first before I did any other video. I want to try to pre-film some videos before I actually do the intro, before I release the templates. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I guess we'll do a really quick like flip through. This is the title sheet and then there's a, an important please read um, um, info sheet and one of the main things in here that it says is all of the how-to instructions will be video only. And the reason for that is it would take me months to do this workbook, this guide for you, if I had to write out all the instructions. So they're only going to be on video, the instructions, the how-to. So that's important. I did provide a set of tabs because there's six different sections and I did that um, on purpose. I want to make sure that when we're making a crafty cubby, that you can flip directly to that part in your workbook. And the pages are numbered as such as well. So there's not 54, there's not a page 54. They're numbered one through whatever. So we're, I'm gonna take this page out because we're not gonna laminate this page just yet. So I'm gonna set that one aside. Um, and then there's a title sheet in front of every single um, section. Okay, so I did, I've already laminated a bunch. Um, these are the ones I haven't laminated. These are in the back. Okay, so that's a whole section in the back. So I'm going to put these back here. Um, so I've already laminated a whole lot just to save time. But like, for example, here is a Genevieve a terminology index. <laughs> and the reason I included this is because I say, I'm going to say a lot, crafty bottom, crafty cubby, crafty mini racks. Um, there's two sheets 
uh, material of choice, what does it mean when I put note or standalone, traceable slash printable? What do these things mean? So it's all right here for you for reference. Um, so that way nobody gets lost or confused. And then they're going to be in, um, the guidebook is in a certain order. So you might want to put your guidebook uh, together the same way I'm doing mine. So here's the title sheet to the Crafty Cubbies. That's the first section. And then here is page number one. So you can see I've already laminated, there's a pocket, and then I've made my traceable templates. Okay, but I've kept a whole section out to show you guys. So I've just pre-filmed a lot of this. <laughs> oh, oh, this is where I messed up. Um, remember my, um, the video I put up, that quick uh, printing tip? This is why I did it, because I laminated all of these. I laminated the whole bunch of them and then I figured out what I had done so what I had laminated was too small I needed it bigger and that's when I found out that the that the that the um, option had changed so it was on fit instead of actual let me show you might as well show you again okay so here is uh, I was printing from my PDF right so I was printing one page because I wanted to see what was going on um, and you see that actual right there well the fit was actually clicked so it shrunk it down right so then when I figured that out I changed it to the actual and then it printed off correctly so here is the difference even though I showed you in the video I'm gonna show you again here is the difference in the size so especially with this template it is important that you get the size correctly because you want to be able to have your ink pad fit inside uh we need to figure out a name for this still um ink station ink pad station ink ink i don't know i don't know we need to figure out a name for, for that so that's where that's how i found out of my massive boo-boo so i've got all these laminated pages and oh boy i was not upset i was not upset i was not happy of my mistake so i had printed the glassing bag off for um to show in the video but yeah i was pretty um pretty upset so that's where i found my boo-boo so all printers are not created equally and some of them print slightly different anyway so regardless of what you do you might be that one sixteenth of an inch off or or you might be um one eighth of an inch off and if that's the case then you might need to make minor adjustments by printing one page that's the mistake i made i should have tested everything out first print one page check it out make sure especially if you're using a4 paper you're really going to have to like when you go and want to make like something like this where the ink pad fits perfectly inside of here you're going to have to test your printer to see um, how it's going to work or you might need to make some necessary adjustments because my uh, paper size is eight and a half by 11 and i know a4 is a little bit skinnier but a little bit longer so you're going to have to make those necessary adjustments through your printer okay so we're, we're looking at the crafty cubby cubby section so there's only one two three four pages in the crafty cubby section so then um also i want to point out too that the mats they have m's next to the page number so there are some that can be mats if you want them to um, but there are some that are definitely designed to be mats if that makes sense there's an inside and an outside it may not say but if it's a if it says it's a mat it will mat the inside of anything or the outside but a lot of times when you construct something out of a chipboard and then you add uh, cardstock over top of that and then you mat that it gets thicker 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 and it just depends on the look that you want how do you want a little bit of a gap or do you want a big gap between your paper and the edge of your uh, crafty tray for example so that we'll get into that later but um all of that you know all of that will be a ch your choice uh, so here's the next section crafty trays which um this is a crafty tray right you've seen me use we're getting ready to do another video i don't know when this video is going to go but we're getting ready to do another video with the midnight garden uh paper collection um but anyway so that's a crafty tray so again We've got all the different, all of these um, have the traceable templates attached to them, and we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. And then here's mats, another sheet of mats. Mat okay, so when you see a page like this, this will actually mat two full crafty trays that are size B. 
Okay, and when we start constructing the actual trays and things, you'll understand that a little bit better. But if you printed that off onto pattern paper or you used your background design or whatever, it will actually mat two of them or the inside and outside of one. Uh, so you really only need to cut out one of each one of these um, templates. You don't need to cut out the whole thing, if that makes sense. Um, so there's again, three different sizes. These are the full trays. And then there's the large trays and then the medium trays. And then there's the small trays. I kind of call that the filler tray because I don't think you can fill up a whole cubby with just these little small ones. Um, you might, you might, I don't know. I haven't tested that out yet because I haven't needed to, but I know you could do one small, one medium, one large, all in one cubby. Or you could do two mediums in one cubby or three small, or no, no, two larges in one cubby or three mediums in one cubby or one full tray in one cubby. So, and then the next section is the crafty bottom. And this was kind of a last minute addition because while I was prototyping, I was pulling drawers out, but there's, I have things sitting on my table and so the drawer kept getting hit. So if it didn't have feet on it, like these have feet on them, then it was kind of getting obstructed and I cannot take that, I cannot stand it. So I had to raise it up off of the ground. Plus, it actually makes it more stable, like for the crafty divider section. If you wish just to make that a standalone crafty divider, putting this on the bottom makes it more stable. So here's another section, crafty bottom. Um, I think there's only a couple pages in this one as well. There's a mat, there's a mat, yep, there's three pages. And then the crafty divider. And this is the only one that you need to score. So you cut this out and then you need to score it here, here, and here. And the reason for that is that'll help you mark where your dividers go on your side panels. And again, I'll show you that when we make the crafty divider. Um, let's see. So then there are the dividers themselves and then there's mats for the inside, mats for the outside, uh, mats for the dividers. Then there's two mats. So these again, I'll explain when we make it, but if you attach your crafty divider on top of a set of crafty cubbies, this is the mat you'll want to use. So there's that and then the crafty top tray, you can either add it to a stack of crafty cubbies or you can have it stand alone and have the mini racks um, sitting inside of it. Um, it's really, I actually have that sitting right here with nothing in it. So here is the crafty top tray. Again, this could be a standalone where you add your, you know, mini racks or you put feet on it and use it as a large garbage tray or just use it for miscellaneous, whatever you want to use. But it also goes on top of the crafty cubbies. Um, let's see. So that's a um, separate section. So you could, it could be a standalone or you can add it. And then there's the base and the sides and the mats and then the mat for the inside. And then, oh, and then here's where this one goes. So this is, a, this is the one we're gonna do together. So then there's the crafty mini racks. That's the last one. There's three sizes. There is a large, medium, and small, but they all have the same uh, side panel. <laughs> uh, my printer is on its last leg, you guys. It is done with me. It is so done with me. Look what, look what it's doing. Look at that. It printed out so poorly, and that's okay. I'm gonna get a new one, and I'm just using up all the ink, so don't mind. I wasn't gonna print it off again. Just don't mind any of that. Um, anyway, so we've got, we've got, um, the mini racks, crafty mini racks. There's a large, medium, and small. And the uh, medium, oh, I don't, I can't get it out right now. The medium will hold like, for, for me, it holds like all of my double-sided rolls of tape. It's perfect size for that. Uh, the small one will hold my bottles of sprays. Um, anyway, there's all kinds of, all kinds of uses. And the mats for the sides mats for the um, the back, the base, and the front panels for the medium or the large, medium, and the small. And then in the very back of your guide, you get a plain uh, green, like a, not a plain, but like a green sheet, like a background. So if you wanted to, you could print a whole set um, onto this green instead of, 
instead of having it on white like this, you could print it onto the green background. I didn't do it because my printer is being a stinker right now, but um, that's what that's for, or you can use it for whatever you want. And then I printed another one of the title sheets because I like to have it on both front and back, so no matter which way I'm looking at it, I've got it. Okay, so now I'm going to move let me see, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna move these things out of the way. So you guys seem to like it when I put the, um, when I put actually put the guide onto the template. So I did it again this time. I hope you guys like it. Um, it is a lot more work for me, but if you guys dig it, then I will do my best to do it every time. I'm not gonna go back and do it, but um, I'll try to do it, you know, on the templates going forward like I did with the glassine bag. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna move these to the side. So these are all the things that I need to laminate. So these are the laminating pockets. I actually found these at my mom's. They're Amazon Basics. I will find them and I will link them in the specific Amazon list for this project. Um, but I like them, I tried them and I liked them and I wasted, I don't know, 25 of them by messing up, but <laughs> I do like them. So these are the laminating pouches we're gonna use, but first, before I get my laminator out, cause I have to get it off the floor, let's do this. Let's work on the tabs. We're gonna cut these out and I'm gonna show you an easy way uh, to do it and then we're going to laminate them so that they don't get messed up after use after lots of use um, we're going to go ahead I'm just going to trim this off I'm going to trim this off just real quick and before I put my paper trimmer this is a Fiskars precision paper trimmer and this is a we are memory keepers scoreboard oh I did get a new tool this is a Teflon um, oh shoot where's that package Teflon pencil bone folder you know how I go through my um, paper a lot I'm hoping this will stop that <laughs> but it's from a company called dress my craft um, I will link it and my Amazon and I will link it. I think scrapbook.com has them too. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and score down all three. Let's scoot this over. I am having to eyeball it just slightly. Oh, sorry about that. But I really like it. I've been using it uh, while I've been prototyping stuff. Not prototyping, but while I was making my prototypes, I've been using it a lot. Okay, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and split this in half, I believe. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and trim them out like this. Whoops, I didn't get quite to the edge, but that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna fold these over, burnish them. This is my, um, my original Teflon bone folder. I love this thing. And you can score with this tip. Um, you can, I just never think about it. I don't know why. Okay, so. An easy way to cut this out, and I already did these two once, and they were too small. Not that I, not that that really mattered. Y'all probably would have never known, but I didn't like it, so I'm doing them again. But you can see where I've <laughs> trimmed them out. So you just want to go through, and you can trim both sides out at the same time. Right. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna ink them up um, and laminate them anyway, so it doesn't even matter. So there's one, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the rest of them out and then I will come back and we'll get to laminating. All right, I got them all cut out and now I'm just inking them up 
This is um, Walnut Stain Distress, Distress Oxide. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna be using. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna be using throughout the whole project, but that's what's sitting here right now. So that's what I'm gonna use. No big deal. So again, you do not have to laminate yours. You could just use a binder and page protector or even a folder for that matter that has those little prongy thingies in it. You know what I'm, well, Jennifer, hold on to your thingy. Um, I just like to do this. It looks better on camera and all of that jazz. It's sturdy. It looks good. It holds up well, all of that. Okay, so we're gonna be laminating these and I had already done this, like I said, because I already messed up once. I had printed off one of those green sheets um, and cut it in half and laminated um, half of it, and it's just white on the back because I'm going to use this probably um, to as a paint palette because where's an example? Shoot, I can't show you it's full stuff. Um, if you need to get on the inside creases and you want it, you don't like the stark white or whatever color it happens to be, we can use our distress inks and wet it and then kind of paint it in, so to speak. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another one since, um, since I've got the other half. So that's gonna be on that same sheet with these. <laughs> so let me grab my laminator and I'll be right back. Okay, I need to move my candle out of the way. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. I was getting a candle for the video. And in my prototype crafty storage unit, um, I have a drawer for my tea lights. These are the ones that last forever that I put in my candles. And of course I got a little lighter. So I, I thought that I'd show you guys that. <laughs> okay, well, let me grab my sheets again. So these are the laminating sheets. I'm just gonna grab the pack, whoops. Again, these were mom's. I didn't order these, but I used them and they're really, really nice. So, I'm going to grab a couple. I don't know how many I'm going to need. Um, so, for the covers, so what I'm going to do is I could have printed this back to back, but that's okay. I'm going to put one on the back side of the other. And I'm going to put the bottom of the page at the bottom of the laminating pouch like this and I'm going to come over to the left hand side of the page more so because this is where the binding is going to be so I came over about that far and then over here on that side I left about um, three-eighths of an inch so now I'm just going to sit this in here I know you can't see my camera's super close right now so this is just a scotch laminator it's very old my husband brought it home from work He's, it's broken this little thingy you have to hold it down so his work got a new one they're very inexpensive um but i'm you know i don't why buy one when i've got one that works just fine right except for this part uh, this kind of hurt my finger especially when i had to laminate twice you know everything twice last time <laughs> i don't know what mill these are i'm gonna have to do my research because i've used three mil and five mil five mil super thick so three mil is probably sufficient. Um, but it doesn't take long. So there's my cover. And it doesn't quite go all the way to the top, but that's okay. We're going to do some trimming. So there's one piece. And then, okay, so this is the title sheet for the last section in the guide. And this is the mini are the crafty mini racks and I'm just going to laminate this one by itself and I'm going to laminate it the same way I just did the title sheet shove it all the way in the bottom get it closer to the uh, right hand side over here oh and it's crooked and run that through so these actual templates pages We'll be putting them back to back, but when we go to cut them, we're gonna be cutting the top off so it forms a pocket, just in case we need extra storage. Um, we don't always, but I like to have it there. It doesn't really hurt anything. I mean, I did print these templates onto their, it's Staples, Staples 110 pound cardstock. Not all 110 pound cardstock is the same. So um, let me, after this goes through, I'm gonna go look what GSM that is because <laughs> I get that asked that all the time and I never think to look. 
but not all 110 pound cardstock 10 pound cardstock is created the same some of them are super thick and some of them are just perfect like the staples brand let me go see what it is number right okay here's the actual package staples cardstock 110 pound 199 gs whatever g g m2 um let's see what does it say over here it's acid free it's 10 percent recycled i don't know if any of that matters but this is my favorite go-to white cardstock to print my templates on so again now we're going to go this page one and page two we're going to put page two behind page one so when it's in a book it'll be like this right and then we flip right so we're going to same thing we're going to shove this into the sleeve here and we're going to have it closer to the right hand side of the page where the page number is did i get it crooked again so we have it closer to this side and see how that's still like the three eighths to a half an inch over there that's where the binding is going to be i'm going to run this through right so there's page one and then there's page two okay so now we got 3m and 4m so we got these and then we got 5m and 6m i'm going to go ahead and do these two off camera and then we'll come back and do the last one with the uh, tabs we've got one thing left to laminate so I've got so many projects sitting here on my in my workspace right now. It's kind of ridiculous. So I'm literally just going to take these tabs here. Uh, trying to figure out the best way I want to do this. I bet you I could get a lot of them in. I'm just going to put them in here. I'm going to leave some space. Because we're going to have to cut around them. I think I'll be able to fit one more over there. No, it'd be too tight. Okay, so I'm just gonna, again, I'm just gonna leave some space. In between. And then for this one, I guess I could just stick it, let's just stick it over here. So I'm just gonna add this to the other part here, this open part here. And I'm going to try to get it to the closer to the top. So that will leave like a, a border so that we can trim it. All right, so I'm going to move my machine back over here. I'm going to carefully bring this over without moving too much. Uh -oh. Boy, I hope it doesn't move too much. I'm just going to hold it because I don't want that green sheet to move, to fall down. I probably could have left more room between the two, the tabs, but that's okay. And since they're already scored and folded, all you got to do is trim them out. Um, and, and fold them and score them just like you would a piece of paper. No big deal. All right, so there's that sheet. So that's all I need this for. I'm gonna put this up and I'll be right back. I'm gonna have to end up changing my camera angle. It's driving me nuts. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim these down. So with the, the, um, cover page i'm gonna put this in my paper trimmer i'm just gonna line it i'm gonna mark it. let's see what am i what did i what did i do with my other ones i think i put i'm gonna cut these at like 11 and 5 16 you can cut them however you want you don't have to cut them at all and that's i'm just cutting the top off not to where it makes a pocket or anything i'm just kind of taking the excess off 
And I'm going to do the same with this one to 11 and 5 sixteenths. And then for the pages, so this is page number one in the mini crafty racks, a crafty mini racks, I'm sorry. I'm going to trim this to 11. So I'm lining the bottom of the laminate up to the 11 inch mark. And what that ends up doing is it cuts part of the paper off and then allows for a pocket. So as some of the templates, you get really close to the actual template itself because it's right there. So I'm going to do that to these three pages, line it up to the 11. So there's one that gets super close, right? And that makes a pocket. And one more. Right up to the 11 and again makes a pocket. Okay, so for this one, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in here and I'm going to leave. Do I have it pretty much straight on one side? I'm going to leave about a half an inch or so from the paper just so where we could punch it. I mean, it won't punch through the paper. So I'm cutting it like at five and three fourths maybe. Yeah, so then I'm going to go around and trim up just the the edges just a little bit. I don't want to open it up or anything. Trim that off in the bottom. Just to give it um, some neatness so it doesn't look sloppy. All right, so there's that sheet. And then for these, I'm going to use my scissors. So I'm going to cut them apart. Be careful though. So I don't want to open because you know there's like an air pocket. I don't want to open that up. All right, so I'm just going to trim these apart like this, and then I'm going to take it. I'm going to fold it in half at that score. I'm going to burnish it down really good, and then I'm going to take my scissors and. I'm just going to trim out without going into that little air pocket that's left. So you end up leaving at least a sixteenth, if not an eighth of an inch, all the way around, except for the part where it's folded. Oops, sorry about that. Right. So I'm going to trim all of them out that way, and then I'll be right back. Alrighty. So all of these are cut out, and I've already put tape on these. So I'm going to. I left one. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'm just, just so they're ready to go to attach to the pages. This is just scrapbook.com, a quarter of an inch tape, and I'm just going to put a piece. Actually, I'm going to put three pieces on here. Um, I have tested this. It does keep it. You know, with it being on a plastic, you worry if it's going to stick or not, but it has so far. So, we'll see. If not, we'll just have to reinforce with stronger adhesive. These are Tim Holtz tonic scissors, by the way. Okay, so now we've got this. So, we can see there's three pieces of tape. There's one here, one here, and one here. So, when we fold it over the page, it'll be, you know, it'll be a solid... I don't know why I keep wanting to focus on that white. It'll be a solid, you know, it, it'll be a, you know what I mean. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm going to move those to the side. Okay, so I've already punched all of those. So here's where you decide if you're going to do the bind it all like I am. This is a Zutter bind it all. Or if you have a cinch. Or if you just want to do, um like regular holes for like a binder. This is where you need to make that decision. You can, if you want, you can go ahead and punch it with your bind at all and then still use binder rings or still put it in a binder. It doesn't matter either way. But this is, this is what I use to make my workbooks. And I forgot to mention that I do have a um, full playlist, a YouTube playlist of all the different types of workbooks that I've made over the years. So I will link that, I'll link it up here and below. So for this sheet, 
I'm just literally going to go through and um, just punch all the way down because it's just going to be kind of added into the mix. Um, it's going to be removable, so I'm not going to stress about it at all. Um, so I'm just going to sit it in here. Right, so um, I just punched all the way down, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors, because again, this is going to be removable. I'm just going to snip at each one of these. This is the only thing, the only piece that we're going to do this to, or that I'm going to do it to. The rest of it's going to be permanently um, in there. Oh, you know what? I missed a step, and I didn't punch that very straight. Jeez. I missed a step, you guys, so hang on. We're going to have to back up. Let me move that. That's okay, I still needed to punch that. Okay. So, let's see, let's first let's add, or let's do our, where are they? This will go in front, but I need to punch it. So the mini racks, I need to add the traceable templates to the mini, to the mini rack templates. So here is, these are all of the pieces I have left over from cutting out all of my traceable templates, okay? All of these pieces, I've got them in a pile. I have an idea. You might even see this video before you see the workbook video. So don't be surprised. Where's those other pieces I just cut today? So I'm gonna add these into the mix. Um, I have an idea of what I'm gonna use with all these scraps. So um, stay tuned for that. And I will try to put it in the video description once that video is public or once this video is public or whatever, or I'll put it up here if it's already public uh, for everything that I'm gonna, or for everything, for the video that I use these in. Cause that's a lot, that's a lot of scraps. So we don't wanna waste that. So I have an idea. So I've already cut everything out that I need. And here are all the pieces that I have left. Okay, so again, like I said, I've got all these pieces cut out. And all I'm gonna do is simply, this is a ATG gun, a Scotch ATG gun, advanced tape clad or a tape runner, as I like to call it. Um, somebody gave me this, isn't that pretty? A long time ago. It's just a little cover that goes over top of my, my thing there. So the tape that I use is not the tape that you would buy for this um, in the store. It's not Scotch Brand. Scotch Brand is super, super, super sticky, sticky, way sticky. Not what I would suggest for this type of application. You can, if you don't want to use tape, you can use Tack It Over and Over, Aline's Tack It Over and Over, but that will take you forever with the amount of templates that there is here, but you can still do it that way. This tape I get um, at the Tape Depot. If uh, Lindsay from The Frugal Crafter, she recommended this tape a long time ago and I've been using it ever since. It's like less than, well, I, I buy it at 24 uh, rolls at a time and I think it's $2 a roll. So you can get it 12 at a time, but then it's like, I don't know how much it is, two something a roll or something like that. Um, but it's cheaper and I ordered some yesterday and I should get it tomorrow. I was, I didn't realize this is my last row. I didn't realize I was almost out, but since I've only got a little pile here, I'm okay. <laughs> but I will link that below. Um, and you have to get the kind, if you have the pink, uh, ATG gun, you have to, it's not a gun. If you have the pink ATG runner, <laughs> then you need to get the specific kind. Okay. So this is page one. So I've got mine all messed up here. Let's see. Page six. And it's, it says on here, there's a little tiny number. Come on, camera. See that little bitty? That's the page number. So we're the Crafty Mini Racks, page one. Not the Crafty Cubby, page one. Crafty Mini Racks, page one. So I know that one goes here. This one goes here. This one goes here. And this one goes here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them all over. And I'm just gonna put just a little bit of tape on each piece, and I'm gonna flip it over, rub it on my hand, or my hand, my arm, just like that, and then stick it to my template. And I'm gonna do this before I put the, um, before I put the book together because of thickness. I wanna make sure I have the right thickness. Now, I suggest that you, when you print all these out, that you sit down and you watch your TV show and, and cut these out because you want to cut them out pretty good. 
Um, you don't want to be too crazy with your with your trimming of these templates. All right, so there's one page. And see on the back is page two. So we've got we've got a bunch of pieces for page two. All right, so I'm going to flip them all over. I'm going to run. I usually like to run it lengthwise, but it doesn't matter. Just a little bit of tape. You don't need a lot because you'll find yourself having to retape every so often, especially when you're working with chipboard, when you're putting these things on chipboard. Um, you'll see that the, the little bit of tape gets kind of not tacky anymore. <laughs> Um, you could also, if you want, look at that bruise. I just realized I have a couple. It is summertime. We've been working outside and whatever, but um, what was I going to say? Oh, you could also like rub it off onto like a, not a paper towel, but almost like a lint-free towel where it doesn't leave behind lint, but it takes away a bit of the sticky. That's probably what I would suggest. Um, did not do one? No. Instead of your arm, because look, I have super sensitive skin, and do you see where it's already red? But that's okay. So like on page three, I only cut out one of these because you don't need both. If you're tracing out this template, I would probably print this out, but if you're tracing, it depends if you're using scraps or not, but if you're tracing this mat out, you know, you trace one this away, and then you flip it and trace the other, because it's going to be two sides of this mini rack. Um, and the reason they're called crafty mini racks, it's like a little mini magazine rack. You know what I'm talking about? little mini magazine rack. I didn't know what to call it because they're like cute little organizer divider thingies. Um, they're just cute little mini magazine racks. That's what I, that's what I think they are. Okay, on the back we've got page four. There's three pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead. Same thing. And, and if you didn't want to do this all at one time, that's okay too. You could do it as you go. You could laminate your pages and then print out the traceable templates as you go. That way it's not near as much at one time. It's totally up to you. Um, okay, five. This is 5M. So this is the mat for the medium mini crafty rack. Okay, there's the mat for the front. I thought about, you know, and like in this case, I could have had two sets here, but then I thought, you know what? You might only make one of this size, so why waste all that pretty pattern paper or whatever you're using um, if you're just making one of this size? So we can always trace onto this side if we want it to. I try to I try to think things through pretty good so that it's that it makes sense. Sometimes it <laughs> it doesn't make sense, so. I just have to laugh at myself sometimes. It's like um, halfway through the workbook, the wording, if it has to be turned another way, the wording is facing this way, and then some, at some point it ends up facing this way or vice versa. And I had to laugh at myself because I was just like, what were you doing? I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I left it because, you know, it's just part of it. It's just part of the process. Okay, so then there is the last traceable template or you can print that off again I could have had like three or four on this paper but I decided you know if you might just be making one of this size and this size is so cute it's the whoops got my essential oil in there it's that size right there is that not cute but look I got my at the moment I've got my sprays sitting in there it just fits perfectly and I have my essential oil I like, I like to use essential oil when I'm working especially when I'm nervous like my intro videos I get super nervous anyway okay so there's that page and then is this the back no that's the front this is wait a minute no this is the front of the mini rack <laughs> so it goes here and then this is the front of the album okay and then I punched that already all right now so for both of these two cover sheets I'm gonna get my bind it all back out. I have made myself a template and it's the same height 
as the pages. So what did you, what did we do? 11 and 5 sixteenths. It's the same height. It doesn't really matter about the width. Um, I'll just have it eight and a half here. And so I did like a test. I marked the center and cause there's a center mark here. So I just marked the center so that I could sit this on here like this. I'm going to clip it together. so it doesn't move and then I'm going to set it in there and then I'm going to mark I'm going to match up that center mark to that center mark so I'm going to just hold it I could probably do them all at one time but I'm not going to and I'm going to press all the way down you need to have this foot out too otherwise it just makes it super difficult okay so it punched that set of holes so now I'm going to scoot it over and this thing here, there's like a little knob right here that you can fit inside of one of those hoses so that you never get off. So I'm going to go ahead and punch until I need to stop, which is right there. It just looks cleaner if you don't have um, a hole like at the top here. So when you do like a little... Um, when you do like a little template like this, you know whether or not that's going to happen. So then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. We're going to scoot it down, put that in the little hole there. And then scoot a couple over. All right. So the two covers are punched all the way down. It's hard for you to see because it's clear plastic, but they are. Okay, so for the pages, they're not quite as tall as the covers, but I'm gonna take that same template that I cut and I'm just going to scooch it all the way down to the bottom of the page. And we're gonna go ahead and clip them together. You see how there's a big difference in height there, but that's okay. I just need them to be the same uh, place where the holes are. And then I'm going to match that center marking up once again. Alrighty, that's all I need that for. Let me get these where they're supposed to be. So there's the front cover. And that goes there. And then these, there's the back cover. So the mini crafty rack cover goes here yes and then the rest of them go here so there's page one two three four five six back cover okay so now we've got the whole thing made except we haven't bound it yet so then the next thing I would do since I've got all of my traceable templates on on the uh, laminated pouch, I know how thick it's gonna be. So I'm just gonna hold my ruler up and it's about an inch-ish, maybe an inch and an eighth. So I'm gonna use an uh, inch and a quarter binder ring. And this is the only color I have, but that's okay. This is, this is from Zutter. It's one and a quarter inch antique silver binding wires or, yeah, binding wire. Yeah, and this is actually 12 inches long, so um, I don't know. It might be perfect. I haven't checked. So if you don't have this machine, again, you can just use a binder and binder rings, or, or you can make your own cover and use binder rings. You don't have to use this machine. I just happen to have it, and I think it looks good, and it's nice and neat and tidy. I've even taken them to Staples before to have them bound so you do that that's in the the list so let me I'm gonna go ahead and count the holes here six oops, let's hold it up so I can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two and I believe there is twenty four of these almost positive Almost positive that I'm right about that. Yeah, so I'm gonna cut two of these off. Um, I'm gonna try to use my Tim Holtz scissors. Let's see if they'll work. So what are you gonna do is you're gonna count one, two of the little 
knobby pieces, one, two, and then you're going to follow it back to this big part, the bigger part. And I wonder if my Tim Holtz scissors will cut through this. They probably won't, and somebody's probably yelling at me right now. Oh, it worked. <laughs> you probably shouldn't do that on the regular, and I just jabbed my finger. Um, but you just want to get rid of two. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. We're going to take our back cover. We're going to flip it around onto the front cover. We're going to straighten everything up again. And then we're going to take those little skinny knobs and we're going to place them in the holes here. Oops. Well, we're going <laughs> to we're going to try to do this on camera. Right. I'm going to try to get them all without missing a page, which I've done before. All right. I think I got it. Did it did I get them all? Oh, that hurt. I think I did. Okay. So, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see, but this part here, this little fat part there, it's going to catch this back cover. So, when we're all done, we're going to flip it around and it's going to catch this back cover. And then this is the front cover. Okay? All right, so I'm going to bring my bind it all back in here, and then here's where you kind of squish the wires. So I'm going to open it all the way up, as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to set this in here, and I think, I can't really get my head up over top of it. One, two, three, four, I think six wires will fit where that lever is at one time, and you want to move the skinny wires. Or the smaller wires, I guess, better way to put it. So you want to squish that down so then it looks like that. It's not all the way closed, but we're going to do that in increments. So we're going to scoot down to the next set of six. Squish that down. Next set of six. You want it to be flat. Next set of six. And then there's a set of four. Alright, so then there's not that big a gap, so I'm just going to scoot it up just a little bit. Maybe to the one inch. Maybe a little more. So we're going to start. We're going to start with that first six again. Squish. And that did it. So perfect. So move on to the next six. Squish. The next six. Pushed a little too hard on that one. Next six. Okay. Now, of course, the bigger the book, the harder it is to handle the book <laughs> while you're doing that part. Okay, so we've got it all squished down. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this back cover around to the back side. And there it is. It is all bound, put together. Woohoo! I hope we did it right. Okay, so then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add the little tabs. Now, I didn't put much thought into this about where exactly they need to go. So, i make some room here. So, the first one is the Crafty Cubby. And I'm going to grab that and take the backing off of that. And I think I'm just going to lay it on here. I'm just going to guess. I really don't know exactly where I want it to go. So I'm just going to guess. I mean, it's a workbook. It's not like you're selling it or anything. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fold it around back. Okay, so there's one. Then let's go, let's go do the bottom one, which would be the mini racks.
So I'm going to go ahead and take the tape backing off of those. Just stick it down here at the bottom. I hope you can still see. Pull it around to the back. Okay, so we've got the first and second. <laughs> and I don't know. I guess we're going to have to overlap them just slightly. Um, about right there. And let's close it. Oh, that's not too bad. I didn't do too bad. Look at there. I mean, I, I was a little closer here than here, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, you guys. That's it. That is all there is to it. I mean, I, I get it. It is. It's some work, but you're going to want to do something. You're going to want to make a workbook. So that's all I got for you. Um, I'm so excited about starting to work with this template. We can make so many cool things with it, so many cool projects. I've got so many ideas. I've got so many prototypes. I've got so much to share with you guys. I cannot wait. So that is all I got for you today. We've got our workbook made for our crafty companion. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and share my videos. Um, don't forget to check out my show more section. And there should be some other videos here on the screen that you might enjoy watching. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.